Hey, it's Brent, and I've written, Christmas ghosts don't have sleepovers. You can insert this between chapters 11 and 12 of the book, Santa Claus Doesn't Mop Floors. Eddie got home to an empty house. It was dark now, and the cold was accompanied by fog and frost in the air. As usual, Eddie went to the side of the porch for the hide key to unlock the front door, much as he'd done every school day since his mom died. There was nothing at all particular about the hide key just an ordinary-looking plastic rock. And then let anyone explain to me, if they can, how it happened that Eddie saw in that rock without us undergoing any intermediate process of change, not a rock, but the face of Jake M the ninth grader from Bailey High who went missing at camp that summer. As Eddie looked fixedly at this phenomenon, it was just a rock again. To say he was not startled would be untrue, but Eddie went to the front door, unlocked it, and when he returned the key to its hiding place, it was only a plastic rock again. Eddie locked the front door and turned on all the lights in one room after another. In the kitchen, he opened a Lunchable, then went back in the living room and turned on the TV. As he sat watching Home Improvement, the chimes on his mom's old clock began ringing, and Eddie dropped his cheese slices as he jumped up from the sectional. Neither he or his dad had replaced the 4D batteries in that clock for months. Maybe this was just the last bit of juice in the batteries, Eddie told himself. He turned up the volume on the TV. As he was picking up his spilled food from the floor, Eddie heard a clanking noise from the garage. The door into the kitchen flew open with a booming sound, and he saw it. The same face, the very same, Jake M. in his cut-off shorts and tank top. Cords and chains were clasped around his waist. Eddie looked at the phantom. What do you want? Much. Jake M., but you've been missing since? Eddie stammered. In life, I was Jake M. In life, asked Eddie, but that means you're... Deader than a doornail, replied the ghost. I don't believe you, shouted Eddie. You're just an undigested bit of baloney. At this, the spirit raised such a frightful cry and shook his chain with such a dismal and appalling noise that Eddie held tight to the armrest. What do you want, Jake M.? You were always the coolest kid at camp when you glued all the art supplies together and when you made everyone believe the lake monster of Lake Bailey had eaten and sunk all the canoe canoes. It was radical, but then, well, I guess we assume you got sent home. But then we heard no one had seen you, so... I wear the chains I forged in life. These nets, this anchor, all of it. That prank was my last. I went to the lake that next night to sink the pontoon, and I got twisted up in the ropes as it sank. It dragged me to the bottom of Lake Bailey, and there my body rests even now. Shut up, Jake M., Eddie shouted. The ghost of Jake M. held up the nets and kelp that entwined him, I am here tonight to warn you while you still have a chance and hope of escaping my fate, Eddie. You will be visited by three spirits. Eddie's countenance fell. Expect the first when the clock tolls one. Jake M. was walking backward, then directly through the side table and front door and was gone. Eddie examined the door, still locked. Quickly unlocking it, he opened the door to look for the ghost. No one was on the porch, or anywhere he could see down the street either. Going back inside, he turned off the lights and TV and fell asleep on the couch. When Eddie awoke, it was dark. Looking out the window, he could scarcely distinguish the basketball hoop at the edge of his street because the fog was so thick. He remembered Jake M's ghost. Only a dream, he said to himself. He decided to go to bed in his bedroom now. In the hallway, he saw the open door to his parents' bedroom, so he peeked inside. No sign that his dad was home yet. He stepped into the room. 
His dad hadn't moved a thing since his mom died. Even a sweater was still draped over the back of the chair. As Eddie looked around, the hallway clock began chiming again and he froze. After finishing the full Westminster chime, a single note, one o'clock. Lights flashed up in the room upon the instant and Eddie spun around to face the door. He found himself face to face with an unearthly visitor who looked like a third grade kid like himself and yet somehow an old man. You're just a kid, said Eddie. I am the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah, right, said Eddie. Get out of my house. I'm not supposed to have sleepovers without asking. He tried to walk around the ghost back into the hallway. At that moment, the spirit clasped Eddie gently by the arm. Walk with me. The spirit was surprisingly strong and led Eddie to the bedroom window. Let go of me! I'm not going anywhere! Christmas ghosts don't have sleepovers! Who are you really? Is this some sick sort of prank? Eddie's protesting did nothing to stop the ghost, who led him straight toward and through the window out into the night. But it wasn't Eddie's backyard. It was a clear, cold winter day, and the sun was just setting over the snowy ground. What is this? Eddie shouted. Wait, why are we going to school now? He could see Bailey, Hi Bailey Elementary School, and despite the evening, the parking lot was packed with cars, as were the surrounding streets. As they approached the entrance, Eddie could see kids and their parents walking in, the kids all dressed in Christmas outfits and costumes. These are but the shadows of the things that have been, said the ghost. They have no consciousness of us. Eddie and the ghost entered the school and headed toward the gym. Looking around, Eddie knew and named every kid he saw. Why, it's Megan, and Cindy, and Johnny, and Justin, and Aaron S., and Aaron L. Why did his heart leap as they went past? Why was he filled with gladness when he heard them give each other Merry Christmas? What was Merry Christmas to Eddie? The spirit led Eddie to the back of the gym as the lights dimmed and a hush fell over the crowd. A piano began playing and the lights came up on stage and a choir of students singing, O oh Christmas Tree. On the stage, third graders dressed as elves were busy assembling presents, while a fifth grade Santa with a pillow stuffed in his baggy shirt kept watch. The show choir joined the stage singing and dancing with oversized candy canes. A fourth grade class held battery-powered candles and sang Silent Night. And then the kindergartners filed on stage, and the ghost pointed at one, standing noticeably off to the side. Eddie immediately recognized his younger self. And it was only a moment before he spotted his parents, his dad in the front row, standing up with their VHS camcorder, and his mom trying to pull him back down into his seat while beaming and waving at Eddie. Eddie watched as his former self held up his construction paper star and ripped it into pieces before throwing it all over the stage. He watched as the music teacher came onto the stage, took his former self's hand, and led him off. He saw the disappointed look on his mom's face as it all happened. Spirit! said Eddie. Show me no more. I told you these were the shadows of the things that have been, said the ghost, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. I hate this. Take me home. The light in the room grew brighter and brighter, and Eddie was briefly aware of being in his own bedroom before sinking into a deep sleep. Eddie awoke to the chiming of the clock. He was in his own bedroom and determined to stay there. As the clock struck one, no ghost appeared, so he stayed in bed. After ten minutes, he was sure he dreamed the whole thing, so got up to check the house. The moment Eddie's hand was on the doorknob, a strange voice called him by name and bade him enter. He obeyed. It was his own house. There was no doubt about that, but it had undergone a surprising transformation. Holly, mistletoe, and ivy hung from every wall and ceiling. Heaped from every surface of the tables, floors, and kitchen island 
was a mountain of every food Eddie could imagine. Turkeys, pizza, fruit by the foot, gushers, Rice Krispie treats, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, bugles and combos, fruit roll-ups, squeeze-its, Sunny D. Seated upon this throne of snacks was a jolly giant who bore a glowing torch held up high to shed its light on Eddie. Come in, exclaimed the ghost. Come in and know me better, man. Who are you? Eddie demanded. My dad will be here any time. I am the ghost of Christmas present. You've never seen the like of me before. Never, said Eddie, and I never want to again. Well, Eddie, that's no way to welcome Christmas. Here, have a fruit by the foot. Eddie realized he was powerfully hungry, never having finished his spilled Lunchables when the ghost of Jake M. appeared. Timidly, he reached out to take the fruit by the foot. The moment his hand touched the wrapper, the entire room disappeared and Eddie and the ghost stood outside. Snow was falling, and Eddie could see Christmas lights on the houses all along the street. The ghost led Eddie along to an intersection he recognized just up the street from Bailey Elementary. On one side was a strip mall with a dollar store and a laundry and tan place. Another corner had an auto body shop and an electronics repair shop, but it was the other corner that was unmistakable, the red, two-tiered roof of a Pizza Hut. The spirit led Eddie straight to the threshold of the Pizza Hut and stopped to bless it with the sprinklings of his torch. Inside, Eddie saw the warm glow from the stained glass lighting over every booth, the red and white checkered tablecloths, the electric glare over the salad bar, and filling up the place, his friends, each with a personal pan pizza and red plastic cup filled with pop. It must be the monthly pizza party. At the counter, Melody was in line with her family. She stepped up to the counter and handed the cashier a slip of paper and a button. One pepperoni personal pan pizza, please, she said. Her parents placed their order, and while they paid, the cashier placed a silver star sticker on Melody's button before handing it back to her. Look, I filled up another button, Melody said to her parents, and pinned it to her windbreaker. I'm going to sit with Liza, she said, as she grabbed her cup and headed to the pop machine. Eddie watched as Melody filled her red cup with a small amount of every pop in the machine, even the diet, and then joined a booth with Liza and Howie. Hey guys, look, my button is filled, Melody beamed. Us too, Liza said, pulling on the strap of her overalls that displayed her book it button. And did you hear? asked Howie. Liza's parents bought us an ice cream cake. That's right, and they said if we finished this one, they might even get us another, Liza said proudly. Since it's Christmas and all. Melody looked around at her friends. Not just Liza and Howie at the booth with her, but... The whole place was filled. Their class made a plan for everyone who'd read enough books to redeem their coupons that night. Wow, she said, everyone's here tonight, even the ubiquitous twins, Ryan and Dylan. Well, almost everyone, Howie replied. Oh yeah, I guess Eddie, Melody said, rolling her eyes. I guess he didn't read enough books again? Not just that, said Liza, lowering her voice. I don't think he can read at all. He's been spending so much time goofing off. I don't think he's learned anything more than what we all learned in first grade, like the alphabet and stuff. The three friends leaned in closer around their booth, all talking in whispers now. Now that you mention it, said Melody, did you notice how he kept getting a coughing fit every time it was his turn to read the mouse and the motorcycle out loud? Yeah, Howie said. And the other day, he told me he was writing cursive, but I knew it was just scribbles. He wasn't even looking at the paper when he did it. Can I tell you guys something? Liza asked, her voice nearly imperceptible. You can't tell Eddie, okay? But I kind of like it when he's not here. It's like, I don't know, calmer and just better? You can't tell him I said that, okay? 
Okay, Liza, it's okay, we won't tell, said Howie. You know, earlier today, he kept trying to dox that Mr. Jolly. And then when he got caught, he just started screaming at him. Like, I just went with him because I don't want him to get in trouble, but it's like he doesn't care about that or anything. Then Eddie just took off and I just let him go. I don't think I want to be friends with Eddie anymore. You're right, Howie, said Melody. If something doesn't change, Eddie isn't our friend from now on. At that moment, a scalding hot personal pan pizza arrived from Melody. Merry Christmas, kids, said the server. Careful, it's hot. That didn't slow Melody down one bit, and she was biting into a slice knowing full well it would burn the roof of her mouth. On the jukebox, Emotions by Mariah Carey started playing. Howie jumped up to refill his pop at the machine. Outside the windows, it was snowing heavily now, and Eddie faced the spirit who was beginning to fade. Stop it! Wait, spirit! Eddie screamed. This isn't real! This is a bad dream! But even as he was yelling, Eddie knew it wasn't a dream. He heard a clock toll midnight and beheld a solemn phantom, draped and hooded, coming like a mist along the ground toward him. When the spirit was right in front of Eddie, and the Pizza Hut had faded to a dim glimmer, Eddie was belligerent. You're nothing but a... He started before stopping himself as he looked into the inky void where the spirit's face should have been, filling Eddie with dread. The spirit only lifted a hand to point the way, and Eddie followed its direction. The spirit pointed toward the electronics repair shop, catty corner from where the Pizza Hut had stood. Only now in the shop window were larger and flatter TVs than Eddie had ever seen, and something that must be phones, although where were the cords? Eddie approached the window with the spirit alongside, still pointing, now to the bank of TVs, all turned to the same local news. Eddie watched as the reporter spoke. And this fugitive was last definitively spot on Christmas Eve, although several tipsters have reported sightings since. In each case, the reports have described the fugitive appearing late at night, outside a window, and immediately vanishing seemingly into thin air, leading the fugitive being referred to online as the Christmas Ghost. After interviewing several witnesses of these sightings, the FBI has just released a sketch artist rendering of the fugitive's likely appearance. All 15 television screens flashed to the same sketch artist rendering. Although drawn in pencil and based on witness descriptions for Eddie, there was no mistaking who this fugitive Christmas ghost was. Older, yes, but unmistakable. Eddie was staring back at 15 images of himself. Then the rendering was gone and the reporter continued. If anyone has information about the whereabouts of the fugitive, please contact the FBI's tip line. The reporter was still talking, but Eddie had stopped listening, frozen in place. Spirit, are these the shadows of the things that will be, or only the shadows of the things that may be, only? Eddie asked. Still, the ghost only pointed in response. Eddie followed the direction the ghost indicated to a graveyard. No! Eddie shouted, I won't go! The ghost was as immobile as ever, but the entire landscape moved under their feet. No! Drawing near was a single grave, and the small headstone was covered with graffiti. Stop it! screamed Eddie. You're just an empty bathroom! Take me home! At this, Eddie felt, felt the ground move again, and he was face to face with the headstone. Under the graffiti, he could just decipher letters even he recognized. E, D, D, I, E. Spirit, he cried. Why show me this if I'm past all hope? I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I don't want to be a Christmas ghost. I'm not a ghost. I'm Eddie, a boy. Writhing on the ground, Eddie swung at the ghost and caught the spectral hand. Eddie saw the phantom shrink and collapse into nothingness, 
until the nothingness resolved itself into familiar shapes, his own bed, in his own bedroom, and a figure standing over him. No! I will honor Christmas! He shouted again. Eddie, said the figure. Eddie, wake up! Eddie, you're okay. It's just a dream. No! Jake him! Eddie wailed. Eddie, replied the figure. It's me. It's Dad. Dad! exclaimed Eddie. Dad, you're here! Eddie, what is it? His dad asked. What's today? asked Eddie. Today? Why? It's the last day of school before Christmas, replied his dad. I haven't missed it, said Eddie to himself. The spirits have done it. Dad, a Merry Christmas to you. A Merry? his dad began to ask. A Merry Christmas, huh? You know, Eddie, you're right. I think it's time we had a little Christmas joy at our house again. I'm going to stay for Christmas, Eddie. But now, you better hurry, or you'll be late for school.